Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Charlotte. I'm a registered nurse and today I'm going to be helping you write an absolutely incredible resume or CV for the ACE application process for your first nursing job. If you haven't seen my first video in this mini series about ACE and NetP, then I highly recommend that you check it out just so that you know exactly what we're talking about and that you're prepared for the next step. But if you're ready to begin your ACE application or you're already started and you're ready to write your CV, then this is the video for you. Before we get into everything, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all of that good stuff, but for now, let's dive right in. So I'm going to be using the template for the CV found on the ACE website, which I will link in the description box for you to access. You are able to come up with your own CV without the template, but I found that using the template was so much easier, especially because I was juggling my placement, assessments, and the ACE application process, so having the template just made things a lot easier. So before we begin let's get all of the boring stuff out of the way. So for this document Ace recommends that you use Calibri font size 11. The text should be black, there should be no spacing or normal spacing for the lines and it should be left aligned. When you are finished you need to save and upload your CV as a PDF document to Ace because Ace will only accept PDF documents for the application. Let's begin. I'm going to be looking down here because I've got my screen up with my CV that I am using as a reference and um, so forgive me if I keep looking away. The first one that you're going to want to include is your full name and you should write this in bold lettering and then underneath that in normal so not bold or italic just normal you want to write down your address where you live you want to write down your email address so they can contact you and you want to write down your mobile and or your telephone number after your mobile number you can also include your a link to your linkedin profile if you have one it's not necessary so if you don't have linkedin don't worry about it. I thought it was a really good way for the employers to have a look through work history and qualities and skills more in depth if they were interested in that. So after your mobile number then put your LinkedIn account so that they can go and access it. After this, if you have any EWI affiliations, you want to put this underneath that. So you'll put a little space for EWI affiliations and then another space to start the next section. Your next section is your personal summary. Your personal summary should be no more than three to four sentences long, so it's just short, and it should describe your career goals and your personal goals, which are relevant to nursing, specifically nursing in New Zealand. You can go more in depth into this in your clinical placement history and also in your cover letter if you wish for your um, skills section of that, but just for your personal summary, you're just doing a brief introduction to it. So my personal summary, I wrote, growing up listening to my Nana's stories from her nursing career was the spark that started my nursing journey and I am eager to embark on this next chapter by supporting New Zealanders as a registered nurse. To my role I will bring open-mindedness, a strong work effort and great enthusiasm. My goal is to become a nurse specialist and complete my postgraduate studies and I am excited to further my clinical and holistic skills and knowledge to achieve this. So the next section is your key skills. So you want to make a list of bullet points in which you briefly talk about your personal skills. Some people just like to list the qualities or skills that they have and other people will list the skills and qualities along with a very short example of you know a time which they have demonstrated this quality or skill. So for me I put I put a bullet point and then a sub bullet point to explain it a bit more in depth. So for me I put time management in bold and then I put organized, punctual and skilled at shift planning sub bullet point. For example during the general medicine placement I created and followed my shift plan looking after three patients. Next bullet point interpersonal skills, establishing rapport, active listening, patience, demonstrating empathy and openness, teamwork and interprofessional collaboration in my example, 
So I picked four main skills, time management, interpersonal skills, observational and communication, because I thought these were the most important things that were relevant to nursing. And then I kind of listed after that a couple more examples of these qualities and then made a sub bullet point of an example of how I've demonstrated this. Your key skills are meant to be brief, so I probably went a little bit overboard for this but at the end of the day your CV is up to you how you want to do it and I thought that I wanted to do it this way to kind of show off a bit more of what I mean by my skills and stuff so the key skills section is that one and then after that you are going to be putting in your education section so this is where you list all of your previous degrees or the high school that you went to and stuff. So you're going to put in the name of the tertiary institute or secondary school and then you are going to put the name of the qualification which you graduated with from that institution. So as you can see I put start date March 2021 and November 2023 as the end date for Auckland University of Technology with the name of the qualification being Bachelor of Nursing. The next section is your clinical placement history. So this is the exciting part where you get to go down memory lane and remember all of the different placements that you've done and talk about them a bit. So you're going to put the start and the end date for each placement and then you're going to put in the region or employer. So you'll put in things like the name of the organisation that you worked for, that you did the placement at, the ward, the region, all that good stuff. <laughs> oh and you're also going to put skills that you learnt or were able to develop while on that placement so and you have to rank them from the most recent to the oldest one so the first one that comes up should be your pre-reg placement the last one that you just did and the very last one that you write down should be the very first placement that you ever did. So my one has August to October 2023, transition placement, district nursing, Waitemata DHB, brackets, 10 weeks, skills developed, and then bullet points such as organizing and running a district nursing clinic, and then also practical skills like wound cares, dressings and assessments, sterile wound cleaning, applying PICO negative pressure dressings. So you want to have a range of the qualities that you have developed as well as the practical skills that you've learned and were able to do. And then April to May 2023 Diabetes Outpatient Clinic, North Shore Hospital, Vitamite DHB, brackets, three weeks, bullet pointed my skills and so on and so on. So you'll you'll have a lot of fun doing that I think because that was the best part of doing the CV for me. So the next section is your work experience and your work history. So you can do this a couple of different ways. You can either list all of the work experience that you've done that you think is relevant to nursing or if you're like me and you haven't really done anything like that. So for example I worked at Countdown and at New World as a supermarket checkout operator and supervisor which doesn't really have much to do with nursing but because I don't have any other work experience that's what I put down. But if let's say you were a supermarket worker and then you got a job as a healthcare assistant I wouldn't mention doing supermarket working you just put the relevant things so you'll put the start and end date you'll put the your job title or occupation and you put this in bold and italic and then underneath it you put your key skills that you have developed and that you do regularly while doing this job so for me I put May 2022 to present checkout supervisor countdown supermarket key skills, customer service, establishing rapport with frequent customers, delegating work and organizing shifts, de-escalation and handling customer complaints, customer assessment with regards to sale of alcohol and working within a team. So even if you don't have healthcare related work experience, you can still put key skills which you think are transferable to your nursing career which is why I didn't put skills such as money handling because that's not really necessary for nursing whereas working with a team and being able to de-escalate conflicts and stressful situations is important and I also put um, my babysitting experience and I put this because it shows that I have experience working with children which I thought was important because it shows that I've worked with young children and it also means with my supermarket job 
I've worked with adults and stuff so it shows that I have worked with a variety of different age groups. So the next section that you can include if you want to, I didn't include this because I don't really have anything to add to it, but the next section is scholarships, awards, achievements and prizes. So if you have been very successful during high school or you've won awards or scholarships at uni and stuff then definitely include these here because they're definitely things that the interviewers and employers will want to know about and it's a good talking topic as well which you can kind of discuss with them and if you want to include this you're going to enter the date of the award scholarship where if you're including you're going to put the name of the award and then any details of that award so let's say you had done the Duke of Edinburgh award you could include this and then under the details of the award you would do either bullet points or a quick little summary about what you've learned what you had to do for it. The next section that you can choose to include is personal interests. So this is a really good section to include if you do things like volunteering or if you have co-curricular activities like let's say you're part of a sports team or you you know do music or whatnot this can be a really good spot to kind of talk about that and it just gives you a little bit more space to show more of your personality outside of nursing but you can also link the skills that you've learned or developed through these co-curriculars to your nursing career. I didn't include this section because I was happy with how my CV was and I thought if the opportunity arises then I can always discuss in interviews and stuff more about myself so it's up to you if you want to include the personal interest section. So the final thing to, that you can choose to include is a referee section. So I would recommend if you're doing this, have at least two referees and their contact details that you just put at the very end of your CV. I didn't do this, but I wish I had done it because if you get job interviews, oftentimes the employers and the interviewers will print off your CV and cover letter and they will have that with them during the interview. And because I didn't put referees on mine, they did ask about them. They do have access to your referees through ACE, but it is always a good idea to also have them on your CV just so that the employers, the interviewers, when they're talking with you, they've got the information on hand. I didn't do it and I kind of regret it. It wasn't an issue in the end, but I just think to save a bit of stress and also help the interviewers out a little bit, having your referees at the bottom with their contact details and names. Um, if you do have referees, make sure that you've told them that you would like to use them as your referees first so that they don't get any unexpected phone calls. But yeah, definitely include that at the end. So that is a very basic but effective ACE CV or resume guide. I really hope that was helpful. If you've gone through the ACE application process or you have your own tips and tricks about how to write a really good nursing CV and resume for your first nursing job, then please leave it in the comments because sharing is caring and we want to lift each other up on our nursing journeys. Before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. I will see you next Monday with a new video. Until then, have a lovely day and a fabulous week. Bye!